video number one for the Amityville Horror Files. Alright, you gotta start somewhere. Instead of starting with the good stuff, this file I'm gonna pull out is gonna be a profile on the dog, the sixth member of the Lutz family, Harry. He actually went by his real name. They changed the kids' names around, but I like how they use the dog's real name. So how was he portrayed? Let's start off with the book from 1977, according to Jay Anson. So, this is what the Lutz talk about in real life. There was an incident early on, like the second chapter, he gets choked on a leash. Basically, he's usually tied up outside and barking at the boathouse and... At one time, he tried to jump over the fence, and his leash gets caught on the fence, and he almost choked himself to death. The kids and the family say that actually happened, that they found the dog that way. And mostly throughout the book, like I was saying, he's just barking in the middle of the night around 3.15 a.m. in the boathouse. And, oh, and Jay Anson likes, every time he brings up the dog, he likes to note that he's a Malamute mixed with Labrador. And he... And then he, George gets told by a psychic that he knows that dogs are extra sensitive to the supernatural. So he uses George as like a search dog to like scope out the house. And I guess he, he ends up finding or he ends up being afraid of the red room. He doesn't even want to go near it. And what's his fate though? Let's get to his fate. Towards the last night... George basically goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the white ghost or the white figure or the white gigantic figure ghost demon for the final night in the hallway of the upstairs second floor. This, while, while the dog was basically occupied with the ghost and keeping the ghost occupied, George got his family out of there. And they were running out the door, and this time the door was off the hinges, and the dog ended up following him, and he ended up surviving, as in real life. So that's basically the tale of the book that they do. He also gets sick in the book, and they have to take him to the vet, and the vet can't find anything wrong with him, and they think it's the house, of course. So, that pretty much sums up his fate in the book that he leaves with him in the van. How do they portray him in the 1979 film? And this is a picture of him. They try to portray him as pretty much a purebred, like, lab. Black lab, basically. And Let's see what they do. Um, he barks at a car in the driveway for no reason. They just film that with the, when he's playing with the kids. He, he's actually the one who sniffs out the red room in the basement. They actually make him do that in the remake, too. But, and then uh, he also takes a whiff of the smoke. Remember when George, like, knocks down the brick wall? He ends up whiffing the smoke, and it's a hilarious scene. Then he, like, is afraid from the red room from then on and senses the spirit, and he goes back up the stairs. It's fucking hilarious. Um, then in the final night, oh, my goodness, he gets portrayed like a total bitch. First, he uh, he ends up... Hold up, let me see. He ends up sniffing. He was there when, like, the black goo erupted in the basement. And then uh, he gets left behind by the Lutzes. But for dramatic reasons, they go to leave. And then George stops in the middle of the road. And he, and he runs all the way back. And he ends up going, oh, what happens? What is he? What is the dog doing in there? The dog's like barking with him in there. Oh yeah, George falls in the goo in the basement, and the dog saves his ass outside of the goo. He pulls him out of there because it's like quicksand, you know. And they both kind of like run out there, and then the door is actually shut this time, even though it was off the hinges earlier. And he ends up picking them, and this is when I took the picture. He actually picks them up and he throws them through the uh, window. Unlike. Unlike uh, George the dog, the golden retriever from Friday the 13th, part four, Tommy Jarvis's dog, remember when he jumps out the window to avoid Jason Voorhees? Well, this one pulls a Harry and he like gets climbed out by George. And anyway, and he ends up getting betrayed by a bitch and, he, and George ends up 
completely carrying him all the way to the car. That's how afraid he is. It's fucking hilarious. Now the remake. Okay, the real Lutz family, they get super buttered over this, I guess, because they, to amp up the remake, for the remake, they, I think I liked how they decided to do this. I hate animal torture in real life. Don't like to see animals get tortured or killed. But someone had to die in this movie since no one had dies in the original or the book other than the DeFeo flashback. So it made sense that that uh, Ryan Reynolds took an axe to the dog in this one. And he's like a golden retriever. And remember he ends up getting lost or he ends up getting slaughtered in the boathouse and they barely show it and it's like a prop puppet and like but they don't really show it that much and then the next day they're like Billy's like hey George you seen Harry and he's just like no nah, he no nah, I haven't Billy he must have ran away and he's like Harry never runs away George <laughs> that shit's hilarious so I bet the dog likes his portrayal better in the fucking remake compared to... So George Lutz, the real George Lutz, he got really mad that they made him into a maniac who killed the family dog like that because he's not really portrayed like that in the book. So that's pretty much the Harry the dog file. I couldn't really find out much information on what his fate was in real life, how long, much longer he lived or how, they had, how much longer they had him before the movie. But if you know that information, I'd like you to leave a comment or whatnot. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. This was the Amityville Horror Files commentary by JBM. I'm out.